I couldn't move. Two paramedics were standing over me, asking me questions I wasn't able to answer because I couldn't move. My parents were standing in the doorway with looks of absolute horror on their faces. They just had to call an ambulance for their 17-year-old daughter. I had been just fine an hour before. What was happening to me? I should probably introduce myself. My name is Megan Hendrickson, and I'm here to talk about resilience. Resilience is the ability to cope and recover from difficult or life-changing experiences. We all need to get through life. There are a few things you should know before I get into my story. One, resilient people don't experience any less suffering than others. They just use healthy coping skills to handle their struggles and adapt. Two, resilience is not a fixed state. You may be more resilient in different situations than others. Three, resilience is a skill. Just like any other skill, the more you work on it, the stronger it becomes. Unfortunately, the opposite is also true. If you don't use it, you lose it. My story started in the fall of 2017. I was in seventh grade and first noticed the pain in my right knee during cross country practice. As the days went by, the pain got more and more intense. We made an appointment with the specialist that winter, but he couldn't find anything wrong with my knee. He said I was probably just growing too fast and that I would go away on its own. Fast forward to my eighth grade year. The pain started in my other knee too. I was unable to do any sports that whole year and had to use crutches off and on. I had a gut feeling this had nothing to do with growing too fast. I mean, how could it? It was far too painful to be because of growing, but nobody would listen to me. I was bullied a lot at school and was told I was faking it and being dramatic, which only made me feel more alone. Eventually, I gave up trying to be heard and stopped talking about it completely. I did my best to pretend like nothing was happening to me. The pain got worse and worse over the next few years, and by the winter of sophomore year, it had spread to the entirety of both my legs. My mom finally decided to take me back to the specialist. At that appointment, I found out I had stopped growing, which meant it wasn't the cause of my pain. Once again, he couldn't find anything wrong with my legs, even after extensive testing. He then referred me to a rheumatologist in hopes that she could figure it out. The rheumatologist examined me, ran tests, and diagnosed me with a rare nerve condition called complex regional pain syndrome. Basically, CRPS is when the nerves and limb go haywire and trick the brain into thinking it's in pain. It's normally caused by an injury or surgery, but in my case, it was most likely caused by overtraining. It's ranked as the most painful medical condition known to man on the McGill Pain Index. It's more painful than childbirth, amputation, and cancer. It's so excruciating that it's nicknamed the suicide disease because according to the National Library of Medicine, 49.3% of patients with CRPS consider suicide, and 15.1% actually attempt it. There's no cure for CRPS. And even if you're lucky enough to go into remission, there's always a chance it'll come back. It was a relief to finally have answers and to be believed, but it was also scary knowing it may never go away. Life went on pretty much unchanged for the next few months, but in June of 2021, I suddenly lost the ability to walk and was in significantly more pain than usual. I was forced to quit my job and spent the rest of that summer in bed. While other people my age were able to go out with friends, play sports, and enjoy their summer, I was stuck in the same room alone with nothing to do. It was incredibly isolating. I went to the emergency room five times that summer. With each trip there, I lost more and more hope. Towards the middle of July, I started fainting from the pain. I tried to fight it, but it always seemed to win. After spending so much time bedridden from the pain and weakness, I lost most of my muscle. I was skin and bones and extremely pale. I had almost no appetite and felt like I was dying. I'd reached the point where I felt that I was dead inside and was just existing. I couldn't even drag myself across the hallway to the bathroom anymore. I had to be set on the toilet. It felt like I was losing everything. I couldn't even take care of myself anymore. Whenever my family had to go somewhere, I had to be babysat. I hated it and felt completely helpless. I started developing other symptoms too. I started having tics, a tremor in my hands, and brain fog so bad that I completely forgot the ABCs for many months. My memory and comprehension were horrible and I struggled to focus. Life had knocked me down so hard that I, in a way, gave up. I didn't believe I was strong or resilient and didn't think anything was ever going to get better. By August, I thought I had experienced the worst of it, but I was wrong. One night, I woke up unable to move. I had extreme pain through my head, neck, and chest and wasn't able to speak. I didn't know what to do, but I had a tiny bit of mobility in my hands. Just enough to text my mom. My parents came running downstairs to my room and called 911. I was then rushed to the hospital by ambulance, but none of the doctors in Clear Lake or Sioux Falls, South Dakota knew what was wrong with me. Eventually, the episode ended. After that episode, things went downhill, started going downhill fast. I was passing out a lot more frequently and had no energy whatsoever. We still had no answers and my family and I were terrified because we didn't know if this was one day going to kill me. 
We were losing hope until one day we heard about a place in Cleveland that helps with CRPS and other pain conditions. We immediately filled out an application. Not even a month later, we got the call that a space opened up and we could arrange a consultation in September. We dropped everything and booked a flight to Cleveland, Ohio. I was then accepted into the pain rehabilitation program where I spent three weeks inpatient and one week outpatient. It was incredibly intense and excruciating, but it worked. In those four weeks, I relearned how to live. I learned to put my feet on the ground, stand, walk, and go upstairs. I've never worked so hard in my life. During my stay there, I was diagnosed with another condition called functional neurological disorder. The tics, brain fog, shaking, balance issues, and random episodes of blindness and paralysis were caused by this condition. I learned to deal with these things, and by the end of my stay, I had completely stopped passing out. This program did not cure me, but it taught me how to adapt and live. It taught me how to be resilient. When I got home, I was only able to stand or walk for six minutes before I'd end up on the floor. I continued physical therapy multiple times a week and had a super intense home program. My balance was extremely bad, which resulted in many falls. It was like I was a toddler learning to walk, but my falls were even less graceful. Like a toddler, I received many scrapes, bruises, and goose eggs from falling. I even got a concussion. I continued to push through all the excruciating pain in my legs and got my function back. I was able to run again just in time for track season. I definitely wasn't fast, but I did it. Not only was I relearning how to run, but I was also managing catch up in school and maintain my 4.0 GPA, even with insane brain fog, reconnect with people, find myself again, and put my life back together. It was extremely difficult to manage all this, and it took everything out of me. But I kept going because I needed this. I needed to live again. After 10 months of physical therapy, I finally had my balance and coordination under control. Well, mostly. I was still in excruciating pain and had tics and brain fog, but I was living again. I was making the most out of the hand I had been dealt. Ever since my stay in Cleveland, I haven't stopped fighting to get my life back. Over the summer, I ran all the time and was able to run up to nine miles straight. I also climbed a mountain and lived a very active life. I worked four part-time jobs and took every opportunity I had to go out and live. I turned 18 and started my senior year of high school. I still struggle, but I'm determined to push through and live a full life. If the program and counselors hadn't taught me how to be more resilient, I wouldn't have survived. They taught me to build a strong support system, set achievable goals, find hope, adapt, and accept change. Now it's my turn to help you. Everyone faces challenges and hardships in life. It's just the reality we live in. Resilience can be the difference between adapting and bouncing back, or giving up and letting it keep you down. It's a key ingredient to happiness and success. No matter how much resilience you have, you can always benefit from more of it. One of the best ways to build resilience is to create a strong support system and get connected. Strengthening or creating strong relationships can provide you needed support, guidance, and acceptance in any situation, good or bad. Volunteering or joining a group can also be a valuable connection to have. It can help provide purpose in your life. Speaking of purpose, I found it extremely helpful to make each and every day meaningful. Do something that gives you a sense of accomplishment and purpose every single day. Set clear, achievable goals to help you look toward the future with meaning. Life starts to feel brighter and becomes easier and easier to see the good. This also works to improve your self-esteem. Start searching for the things you like about yourself. The more often you do this, the better your self-esteem will be and the easier it will be to love yourself. Feeling good about yourself plays an important role in resilience because if you don't like who you are, you are less likely to try to improve your situation. It's also important to reflect and learn from your mistakes. Look at how you dealt with struggles in the past. What worked and what didn't work? How can you apply that to present or future situations? Try not to dwell on what has happened or what you lost. If you're stuck in the past, you can't move forward. Be proactive. Don't ignore your problems. Figure out what needs to be done. Make a plan and take action. Things take time, but remain focused and do what you can in the moment. Your future self will thank you. Another key to building resilience is to find hope in the future and be willing to adapt. You can't change the past, but you can always look toward the future. Things might not be exactly how you picture it to be, but accept the change. It could lead you down an even brighter path. Make sure to take care of yourself. Practice healthy coping skills, create routine, eat healthier, be physically active, get plenty of sleep, and just overall do what you need to do to feel as good as you possibly can. I found when your body feels good, you tend to have more energy and motivation to get through the day. We need resilience to get through all the problems life throws at us, big or small. Building resilience is not an easy thing to do, but it's very important if you want to live a happy and successful life. I'm not going to lie to you, it can be a long process, but if you stick to it, you will be glad you did. Learning to be more resilient got me through the darkest of times and taught me to adapt and live. It can do the same for you. Just give it a chance.